Hey there, Oasis Youth. It's Youth Pastor Sam here. I wanted to give you a quick covational this morning to be an encouragement and, and support for you in this weird time. Ah, good stuff. Well, uh, I wanted to continue what we talked about last week. If you remember, last week we looked a little bit about, we looked at, we looked at suffering, right? We looked at uh, Easter weekend, right? We looked at Good Friday, the day when we receive the news that leads us to suffer or leads us to mourning, that leads us to, as the biblical word, uh, as the Bible would say, to lament, right? That, that Good Friday is not necessarily good in the sense that it's good news when we first receive it. It's tragedy, it's sorrow, it's suffering, it's deep, deep sadness. And then we looked at Holy Saturday, the day between Good Friday and Easter Sunday, the day of long suffering when we persevere through the hurt and tragedy that comes with the loss that we experience. So I wanted to follow up with that theme of, of suffering and lamenting and, and sorrow with you this week. And I wanted to couple it with what, what we talked about this last Sunday. So if you if you were with us on our Zoom meetings, uh, I encourage you, if you if you weren't, join in. We'd love to have you with us. We gave away a $25 gift card to Christina. Congratulations. And we just had a blast uh, together. And something that we looked at and something that we're going to continue looking at is God's people in quarantine, God's people in lockdown. It's stories in the Bible where people who follow God ended up getting locked up. They ended up getting shut in or exiled away for a season of time. And we're looking at their responses. We're looking at what they did in those times that made them stand out as God's people above the rest. So one of the stories that we looked at this last Sunday was the story of Paul and Silas, the, the story of when they got locked up, they were thrown into jail, thrown into prison for doing God's work. And around midnight, they they were in an un uncomfortable situation. They were in stocks, they were in chains, they, they couldn't move, they were uncomfortable. They might have been so uncomfortable that they couldn't sleep. But it was around midnight, the book of Acts tells us, where they were they were crying out to God in the midst of their uncomfortability, right? When we looked at looked at the different things that one, the different things that make us uncomfortable in this season. Maybe for you, it's you miss being at school. It's uncomfortable to be at home all day. Maybe for you, it's my siblings are gonna drive me are driving me crazy. Maybe for you, my, your parents are driving you crazy. Maybe your pet is driving you crazy. Perhaps you're like me and this hair is driving you crazy, right? It's just, I haven't had a haircut in two months. And if this looks, if this looks bad, try wearing it, right? This season is uncomfortable for many different reasons that we can come up with. But in the book of Acts, in this story, Paul and Silas, in the midst of their uncomfortability, they cry out to the Lord. And not only do they renew their confidence in God's ability to save them. They also influence the entire prison cell. Right? Something that they did reminds me of the book of Psalms. Right? If the book of Psalms, if you open it up your Bible, it's like right in the middle. Right, right in the middle of your Bible. And it's one of the biggest, it actually is the biggest book in the entire Bible. It consists of 150 chapters. Right, 150 chapters, and each one of those chapters is a prayer. It's a prayer, it's a song, and it's poetry. Right, all three combined. And the importance of this book is that through the years, through ever since it was compiled together over 3,000 years ago, or two and a half thousand years ago, I don't, I don't know the exact time. I know it was around when Jesus was around, but it was compiled over Israel's history. People would read these psalms, they would sing them either individually in their household or together in the temple, right? Think of, think of the worship songs that we sing today. Think of the songs that we sang last Sunday. This is Amazing Grace. He's a chain breaker. How deep the Father's love for us. They would sing these 
songs because they were so important to them. They, they characterized and they put together the, the cries of those who knew God deeply in times of happiness, times of sorrow, and times of confusion. And what's interesting about the book of Psalms, it's 150 chapters long. But 50 of those chapters, one-third of the book of Psalms is what's is categorized in what we call lament. Right? They're known as the Psalms of Lament. If you don't know what lament is, lament is simply just sorrow. It's grieving. It's, it's experiencing loss and processing it through an outlet, through a vocalized outlet. And so 50 books in the book of Psalm are dedicated to just this, bringing our sadness, bringing our sorrow, bringing our grief to the Lord. So this morning I want to look at uh, the pattern that you will see following most book of or most Psalms of Lament. And we're going to look at Psalm 22 to see how exactly that pattern is followed. So the very first thing that you'll notice in the book of Psalms or in, in a Psalm of Lament is that the, the first thing that happens is they cry out to the Lord. They address the Lord. We see this in Psalm 22, verse 1, in the first four words, don't we? It says, my God, my God, right? They're not crying out to Baal, who was another, who was, who was an idol, who was a false god, who was a god of another nation. They weren't calling out to Ashtaroth, a god of another nation, who was an idol, who didn't really exist. They just made a hole for it. And they're not crying out to somebody who's false. They're crying out to somebody that they know deeply, my God, my God. They're crying out to somebody that they know on a personal level. You don't just cry out, my God, in this time. It's either our God, our God. But this starts off by saying, my God, my personal God, the one who created me, the one who knows me, the one who cares for me, the one who is in a relationship with me, my God, my God. There's a cry out to, there's an addressing to the God of the universe in, this, in these first four words. The next thing that happens in a psalm of lament is the, the cry out of lament. Right, we see this in the next part of it. Why have you forsaken me? There's a cry out of grief, of sorrow. He says, why are you so far from saving me? So far from the words of my groaning. Oh God, my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night. I'm not silent. There is a cry out of lament. There's also implied in this statement, the next part of this is, is a call for help. Lord, I am calling out for help. I'm lamenting the fact that even though I'm crying out for help, it seems like you're being silent in this time. The next part of this psalm of lament is a shift. It's a, it's a subtle shift that happens in every, almost every single psalm of lament, and it's very important. We see this in verse 3. It's a turn to look at the Lord. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. And you, our fathers, put their trust. They trusted you, and you delivered them. They cried to you, and were saved. And you, they trusted, and were not disappointed. See, a psalm of lament, first, it addresses God. Second, it cries out and it expresses the sorrow. Third, it, uh, it brings out a plea, a request for help. But four, it turns to the Lord even though grief is there grief exists right it turns to the lord it reflects on his past goodness his past 
faithfulness for one, right? It says, in you are fathers. In you, those who came before me, they put their trust in you. And you delivered them. They cried to you and they were saved. And then in, in you, they trusted and were not disappointed. It, it, the psalmist is going from, my God, I'm talking to you, to this situation is not fun. It's not fair. It's not exciting. I'd rather not go through it to back in the day. I know that you have been faithful. And it moves to you are still faithful. A true psalm of lament, a true a prayer of, of sorrow, of grief has this progression. Going from I'm addressing my Lord my, my God, my Savior. So this is what's going on in my life. Then to acknowledging all that God has done and all that God has done and will do. And then finally, the last thing you'll see in a psalm of lament, and this, it, it'll go back and forth from one to the other to the next. You see this all the way through Psalm 22, but the last thing you'll see is a vow. There, there's a vow, there's a commitment, because in a relationship, I make commitments. I make vows. Right? I, I say, I will do this, because I, not because I want you to do something for me, but because I'm in a relationship with you, I'm going to do this, because you have already been faithful to me. This is what he says in verse 22, and this is, his vow that he makes. I will declare your name to my brothers. In the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him, revere him. All you descendants of Israel. Right? That, that the Psalms of Lament, they typically end with, or they include a vow or a commitment that God, I, because you have been faithful to me, even when I have not been faithful to you, I am going to respond to you by doing this act. I'm going to respond to you by, by putting my trust in you. I'm going to respond to you by, even though my family is difficult right now, by loving them. I'm going to trust in you by reaching out to my friends and asking them how they're doing and how I might pray for them. In this time, I am going to vow to follow you more faithfully. So, as we looked at the psalm, I, I, my, my application point for you, my response that I want to give to you, if you would consider how to respond to this word today, is write out your own psalm of lament. Go ahead and read through Psalm 22, read through some other psalms, and write out your own psalm of lament. Address the Lord. Say, God, my God, my God. You can include however you want to. My God, who has saved me, who has brought me out of, uh, who has brought me out of my mistakes, my sin, my sorrow, my guilt, my shame. My God, you, it's you that I am talking to. Jesus Christ, I am talking to you. And you can address the Lord however you wish. Then let out your cry. Tell God what what is going on in your life. He's not. He he doesn't. He's not unaware of your situation. Give it to him. Say, this is what's going on. Give him a request. God, this is what I would ask of you. And then, turn to God and look at his faithfulness to you. Write out, think of, call to mind all that he's done for you. Maybe in the middle of your psalm of lament, break out into a song. Break out into a song. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Right? If you feel lost, he's a way maker. Maybe break into a song that, for me, that's in, that's something that I do sometimes. That encourages and recalls to mind all that God has done. And then lastly, make a vow. Make a commitment. To God, in this time, because you've been faithful to me, even though all of this stuff is going on, I will choose to follow you. And I can tell you from experience that uh, the psalmist who wrote this, I, I don't know if he if he was immediately delivered from a situation. I don't think he was. 
In fact, when Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me on the cross? He had this in mind and God didn't come down and, and deliver him from the cross. It didn't change the situation at all. But what it did change is perspective. It did change a shift of focus to the Lord. And my, my promise to you is that that is what, what's needed to grow us. That's what God will use to shape us into His people. So if you want to be that person that is shaped more into God's image in this time of difficulty, in this time of struggle, in this time of, of uncomfortability, I encourage you, write out a psalm of lament. Follow those steps and see what God does to meet you in this time. Alright, I uh, hope you can join us uh, this week. We're going to have some fun games. We're going to have some fun stuff going on. And ultimately, keep, keep in touch with us with our Instagram and our Student Ministries page. We want to make sure that you are uh, engaged in community in this time. And we want to be there for you, be with you. So be with us. We're with you. We're praying for you. We think of you. We miss you terribly. I uh, hope you guys have a great day. And I will catch you next week.